So, hello everybody. My name is uh, Geert van den Burg. Uh, today I will do, give a talk about uh, toxic behavior in online multiplayer games. Um, I put, uh, yes, the evening I went in online in my uh, chat log reports to see what kind of toxic behavior I could find. So, um, we got some. But actually, uh, I had to search for a long time because there were much uh, worse things there. So, really threatening each other and stuff like that. So all, even in Curve Fever, we still have this problem, of course. Uh, but I will tell about uh, what we've done and how we're going to solve it and uh, how what we already solved. So what is toxic behavior? Uh, I see it as any aggressive, unintended game design-wise behavior that you do to offend another person. Uh, most commonly it's shown in, uh, in chats, uh, in yeah, messages, but can also be in in-game play behavior where you team up against, against each other or where you uh, try to cheat, for example, stealing and selling accounts. Um, I tell a little bit more about Curve Fever. I don't know if everybody knows it. Uh, in essence, it's a multiplayer game. Um, you play as a, a snake and your opponents also play as a snake and uh, it's a very competitive game because there's only one winner and the rest loses. Um, and it's quite a popular game. We have uh, about 500,000 players a month. This also means a lot of uh, toxic players to deal with. Uh, it's a free-to-play game. You can play it in your web browser. It doesn't add up for the, to the easiness because everybody can just register an account and everybody can be uh, toxic. You have nothing to lose. Uh, we have uh, a social features. We have uh, chatting. Uh, chatting is a very important part in our game uh, because we feel like the, so the social inter interaction is very important. That's also how Curfew for one started out, so chatting is an important part. Um, and we also do uh, community building uh, through our forums. So also we have a forum which we have to uh, try to manage. Uh, I started out uh, Curfew for two, uh, two years ago, I think, and uh, I just got it online. It was very nice, only made 1,000 players playing it. Uh, you had to wait 10 minutes for a game, 20 minutes for a game, but it was just really, really awesome. Uh, everybody was very nice to each other, there was no problem. And I think if you have a small community, you always will have a, a nice community. I hope for you, too. Um, but as the community got bigger, uh, of course you also get more toxic behavior in the community. But it scales harder than just uh, normal growth. Because you also get players who, don't, are not, who are not fans of your game, who are just want to, um, who do just want to be toxic, want to troll around a bit. Um, and beside that, uh, we were just a very small team, so we did not think about toxic behavior in advance. So everybody could just do whatever they wanted. To give an example, uh, this is our main first page you see. There is an active topics list, and every player who posts a new topic comes on this active topic list. So what happens? We have our angry player who is very upset because something happened to him. And what he's going to do? He's going to make three posts in our forum, and everybody of the whole community sees this uh, 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 post. Okay, I think it's not only a problem for, for Curve Fever, but I also think it's a problem for the whole industry. Uh, I think of games like League of Legends, for example, of Call of Duty, and I talked just with somebody who also reminded DayZ to, my, to bring up to my mind. <laughs> so maybe we can talk a bit uh, on the end of the presentation about that. Uh, also, YouTube comments and blog posts and stuff like that, they also uh, tend to attract a lot of toxic behavior. And it's a difficult problem because a small group can really make a big a perception difference on the game. So maybe 1% or less of your players are unhappy with you, but they can really make a lot of damage. Um, also, you need manpower to deal with it. Um, you cannot put your time in your game. You have to deal with the community somehow while well, actually you don't want to do this. Um, and they need to be reliable as well. Uh, and they are anonymous, as I already said. So many of the people I, I speak, especially when I talk to high school people or interns who want to work at Curve Fever, uh, they always say to me, like, you know what, you just have to deal with it. That's how the internet works. But uh, I don't think so. Um, we care because there are two main reasons people play Curve Fever. It is because of the competitive play, so they want to... Uh, play with each other, but also because of the social interactions. And these social inter interactions are really damaged by the toxic behavior. Uh, and the third reason 
is when you have a when you have a review on a site, for example, it's on Newgrounds, then they can uh, write these kind of uh, reviews or on Congregate. So this is in the beginning of your game, and of course you don't want this in your game. This is just really harmful. Um, so the problem is clear, right? We need to do something about this toxicity. Uh, who are the toxic players? There's not one clear profile. Many times, toxic players are... Uh, there is not some such thing as a toxic player. There's a player who sometimes behaves toxically. Uh, we had people coming by, by at our office uh, to talk about the future of Curve Fever. And one of the guys was a very nice guy, a very normal guy. We had a great talk with each other. And two weeks later, he was banned. Because of toxic behavior. Not because he and visited us. Uh, another example is on the forum post. Uh, we have a, a guy who's always um, uh, posting very negative comments, which derails all the topics. Uh, like this and that. But this guy also wanted to help out with our community when we were in need and we needed a video recorder for a small uh, tournament. Okay, so now we get to it. How to handle a toxic behavior? Uh, I think there are five points to, to consider. Uh, removing triggers, hide toxic behavior from others, uh, give feedback to the player, remove the toxic players if necessary, and finally, uh, stimulate positive behavior. And the last one is very, very important because we tend to look in the negative and try to find negative things, but this last one can also direct the attention of your whole community. It's very powerful. Uh, and I will give examples of in-game and the forums. Um, so to remove the triggers, you have to understand why what triggers toxic behavior in general. Um, I feel like losing games, a feeling of unfairness, uh, a very competitive environment, these all come to my mind. And these, of course, cannot be changed. Uh, in a competitive game, somebody has to lose. So we cannot let everybody win, otherwise you should make another game. Um, and some people also just like to troll. I think uh, about day nine uh, is a very tough game to re get removed of any toxicity because the whole game is more or less built about uh, toxicity, I think. Um, some of the triggers uh, which uh, we had in, a, in our uh, on our forums, for example, was we put a cheater section on our forum. So it was a great way of people to end, end up in endless flame wars. So that's one thing you shouldn't do. Uh, otherwise, I would say, like, try to minimize the amount of cheating in your game. It's very obvious, of course. Um, uh, but this is difficult to, uh, this is difficult to do. Okay. Um, here we have uh, a toxic player. And he's saying bad things to each other, right? Uh, and one of our uh, developers had an idea, what if we can turn this toxic player into a cow? Uh, what if we could change all his bad words into cow-like words? Uh, so that's what we did. And then you can end up with this. <laughs> so this is uh, very nice uh, for us. And it's also very nice on the internet because when we have an update, people have to wait, they're unhappy. And this is what they post on Facebook. Moo. Four likes. Yes. To be honest, it's very nice as a feature for your game. It's not going to help a lot in uh, helping your toxicity. Um, what does help is uh, shadow banning. Uh, shadow banning is when it's hiding toxic behavior. So somebody is showing toxic behavior to somebody else, uh, but you don't let it receive to the messenger. Um, and this way, the toxic player is not motivated to continue uh, being toxic, and the messenger does not know what is happening. This can very well be applied in on forums, uh, where it's already a lot of applied, but it can also be applied in game. Uh, so, in some way, it's like a caving a troll. Um, here we have a chat, right? In blue, there is a toxic player, and the receiving player would see this. That's the ID, and you have to apply this in such a way. There are several signs you can detect when somebody is going to be toxic. For example, one of the triggers is you lost a round, you lost the game. So if you have a toxic player, shadow ban him and you will not uh, say anything uh, until 10 or 20 seconds after the game. Another thing is if he starts swearing, then it's also a sign you might be toxic. Uh, so maybe not show that to the other players. Uh, lastly, 
uh, sometimes you have to take action to a player. You have to tell him what you did is not right. You have to give him feedback. Um, in the beginning, we, not, we did not give any feedback. We just banned him. Um, and he was uh, confronted with not being able to log in, and he would go on the forums and post shit on the forums, and the result in a lot of spam. So what we do is uh, we show why they are uh, banned on their post, and we also have an in-game message stating why they are, posted, uh, why they are banned, and uh, we send them an email. Uh, the clear feedback is very important. It's also very important to uh, save the chat logs to uh, send them to them so he can see what he actually did. Okay, uh, removing toxic players. As I said before, there's no clear picture of a toxic player. So many times a toxic player, the toxic player does not really exist. Uh, but some players go too far. And then you have to take action. You also have to dare to take action. Even though a player maybe spends 100 euros on your game, it doesn't mean he has the right to abuse other players or to cheat. Um, yeah. And as a free-to-play free game, I always see it as this. Your free players uh, are content for your non-playing players, uh, n for your paying players, sorry, and uh, for everybody. And you should not scare away your players because somebody is being toxic. So they have to take action. And lastly, uh, stimulate positive behavior. Um, this can be done in various ways. I just named here a few. Um, uh, what we see is that as soon as we don't do anything in our game, uh, more toxic behavior appears. So as soon as there are things happening, uh, players are distracted by things. So what we do is tournaments, sales, promotional activities. And these are very nice, actually, because these are also a great opportunity to monetize on your players and to do a little bit of PR and marketing. So they go hand in hand. Uh, the last part is... Uh, to get your commun community creative uh, or involved. Uh, we have, for example, have creativity contests, a selfie topic, uh, a meme topic. And the funny thing is about these things, these are always done by women. All these topics are always done by women. So get women on your moderator team to work for you. Uh, this is uh, an example of uh, uh, in a creative topic induced by one of our players. Okay. Um, as told before, the problem of toxicity is still that, uh, especially in in-game chatting, for example, uh, you need manpower to process all the chats, which is uh, cumbersome and, uh, and expensive. And also, the feedback comes most often comes too late. Um, and I think that in the future, uh, we will solve this by computer engineering. I think in between now and five years, there's probably going to be a service who is going to handle in-game chatting and who directly gives feedback like, hey, this is not okay. Uh, so if there's anybody in the room who actually wants to do a master thesis on this or something, then I will be willing to, uh, to provide some uh, chat logs. Okay, we come to the end of our conclusions to our presentation. So these are the five points. Try to remove the trigger. Try to hide toxic behavior from others. Uh, give feedback to the player. Remove toxic players and stimulate positive behavior. We went from a very negative community uh, to a quite positive community. I'm very happy with my players. So this is me, uh, Geert van den Berg uh, from Curve Thank you very much. Um, and yeah.